driving down the road. Uh, not really. <laughs> I'm not, not sure what to talk about, but we got a. Um, me and Luca are going to get back into our YouTube channel. He's sitting over there making noise. Uh, hopefully, the AC doesn't drown out this. But what we're talking about is getting back into our YouTube channel for the ones that were out there, the, I think 19 subscribers we did have. <laughs> but um, we've got to get things going back to, you know, kind of the things that we started and we liked doing was working on cars. We tried videotaping it and I think Luca got aggravating with all the editing that was going on. We, uh, kind of didn't know what we were doing. We were building a four-wheeler, we were building this hot rod. And the other part is it kind of got annoying to always try to have a camera there. You know, you forget to turn it on or you forget, you know, what we were building. I built some stuff that wasn't on camera and that kind of aggravated me a little bit. But and then we totally jumped ship when we started racing go-karts. We got, uh, Luca got into a go-kart seat and was actually pretty good at driving and, uh, ended up winning a points championship. Just got really good and I got excited, started spending way too much money on racing and we kind of lost the feeling for racing for a while, got back into it. Now we're trying to get back into it again. But we're not going to race as much. I think he was getting burnt out for me pushing him to race and, you know, trying to take it all to the next level when he really just wanted to have fun and just race here locally. So that's what we're going to try to get back into. Uh, so that kind of is what killed the, the channel there in a nutshell. But we're going to get back into the channel. We're going to start building. And then the week before we race, we're going to try to make what we're going to call cart week. Will be the what's it called? The playlist will be cart week within our channel, and we'll uh, bring you along and show you exactly how much work it is, what it takes to get there. Uh, you know how we do tires, how we set up the go kart, how we got to make sure the go kart is ready. You know, if our engine builder will let us, we'll take you on a little bit of journey of him, you know, dropping motors off to him and him refreshing them and keeping us going. And, uh, you know, because it's, to be in a go-kart, it's still a lot of work. It was more work than we thought when we first got into it. We thought we could kind of sneak our way in and learn a couple things and go race. But we learned that, that it has to be, you know, proper setup. You know, the way you set your go-kart up, the way the seat's in the go-kart, uh, how you prep the tires, you know, tire pressure, it was just so crazy. And, um, you know, me being already in my 40s and him 16, 17, you know, we're like, wow, this is kind of like getting out of control to the point to where we were losing interest in it because it was too much work and we didn't know what we were doing. We would have started from the beginning to where he was excited as a young kid to race it probably would have been a little bit easier for us but i did get into it with a, a, a nice group of guys that are willing to race and willing to help us and you know tim our engine builder he's always you know phone call away text when we're racing he's like how you doing what's your tires doing what, what's the the time gap between you and the leader you know it's it's almost like having a nagging wife when you got him as an engine builder and he's just always constantly wanting to know what you're doing. And then when he shows up the track, he pretty much just takes over our tire program. And, you know, the very, uh, Luca's biggest win down in Jasper was we had one of Tim's motors and he walks up to it, if you're gonna race my motor, you're gonna win. And he loaned us a set of tires and we won. You know, it's the best showing we ever had at Jasper. You know, we qualified, uh, fourth went out in the race got shuffled back to 10th Luca come all the way back to third and first second third they were 
nose the tail there for the longest time and first and second got mixed up and Luca ducked under him on the last lap coming out of turn four and won it. And, uh, it, it was it was crazy the excitement that we both had after that win. And, uh, but you know that's the go kart side of it and that's what we plan on doing with that is to to bring you guys on for that ride. We'll, we're gonna, make videos through the week of, you know, scaling up the go-kart, fixing it, doing all the adjustments, making sure that, you know, it's still ready, you know, washing it, moving all the bearings, tearing it apart, putting it all back together, show you the concept behind that. And then uh, if we get the tracks to allow us, we're going to film while we're at the track. Uh, you know, buzzing on tires, doing tire prep, you know, tire pressure, you know, the stupid things we say while we're there, while we're joking and cutting up. But to get back into the hot rod side of it, which is what the channel is based on, is that uh, we've got to get caught up on some side projects to get back into the hot rod projects. Like, you know, the truck I'm driving right now is my F-250. And, uh, you know, we plan on doing a lot of traveling with the go-kart racing. And if the hot rods, you know, get a good hot rod built, I plan on buying a gooseneck trailer and I want to convert this truck to a dually. I've already got the axles bought. I've got the wheels bought. I need. I got the bed bought to to get the dually fenders and all that. And I uh, uh, could have used the bed I had, but Luca crashed it, bent it up when he was two or three years ago. So the bed's trashed on the one side. So it ain't worth trying to fix this bed. That's why I bought a whole new bed. And then. Uh, right now is four more tires to, to make the dually set up be complete for the tires and wheels but we have everything forward to do it the axles the bolts um, I bought aftermarket wheels and like I said the only thing I like is the four tires to finish out the build for the dually conversion and then we were trying to decide what we got to do. Luca was a putz and he ended up wrecking his truck. And so we got to fix that. Our goal with that truck when he got it was to rip the front suspension out and put a Jeep axle in it, rip out the rear axle and put a Ford 8.8 axle in it, doing a spring over, which will give us our three to, three to four inch lift in the back. And then with the Jeep axle, make the truck set level when we do the conversion with the Jeep axle, which is still our plan, but since he wrecked it, it's gonna to have to be a quick, get on that one quick, because now he's got a job, and I'm trying to drive him all the way to Lake Park. Lake Park gets aggravating because it's 30 minutes away, 30, 40, 30 or 40 minutes away, and you know, him working after school, sometimes it goes in and right after school and sometimes it goes in at six and gets off at nine and then that leaves the wife half the drive to pick him up because he got in trouble and we just won't let him borrow the car now so for him to get back on the road on his own we got to fix his truck and he messed the front end up which really doesn't matter because it's getting all cut out but he messed the fender the front fender up the hood the bed and haven't really got into it to, to know what else he messed up but that doesn't have to be fixed to get him back on the road. So in our next couple videos, it's going to be uh, us buying the parts to get his build process going. All we got to do is we got to finish. Uh, we bought diff covers. You know, just did some cool stuff with the 8.8. .8, we bought a diff cover. The, I think it's a 3 8 3 8 thick steel or quarter inch steel thick steel diff cover that we had to weld up. Which we already started doing that, but we didn't make videos. And that kind of gets me back to the point of we were doing things without doing videos. So we got to finish up the, the rear axle and the front axle before we can do the swap. And then we got to buy the stuff to do the swap. You know, like we're going to make our own control arms in the front, but we're going to use all Jeep bushings. So you can just go to the, any hardware or parts store and buy all the bushings if one goes bad. We're going to do the polyurethane bushings, of course. But it'd be easier to order. We order them for a Grand Cherokee, which is what the axle come out of. And we got lucky with the axle is that it's the, on the passenger side. If you don't know about Jeeps, the passenger side axles are usually two-piece and it's vacuum actuated to lock the axle when you go on the four-wheel drive. 
Well, we got lucky and that whole axle on that side, it's one piece. So it's one less conversion of part we got to worry about. Um, so that's, that's kind of a catch up on the videos on the channel and what we plan on doing. Today we're driving around just goofing off. Uh, I got to go downtown and pay all the taxes and tag fees on everything. Uh, get raped by the government or the state of Georgia at least on all of this. But like I said, we're going to get back into it. Hopefully we'll get a video up maybe this week. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know what his work schedule is. Maybe we can start driving around and find parts to get his Jeep project going or the Jeep axle swap going. But uh, tag, like, share, subscribe. Make sure you get into our videos again. And uh, we're definitely going to try to get back into this. And we've got another adventure that I ain't going to talk about right now that we're going to try to plan on doing which that'll bring in more videos too because that is going to be uh, a learning curve for both of us well actually the whole family we're trying to bring the whole family in on this one so uh like i said like subscribe share do whatever you got to do to get the channel going and help us get it going and uh we'll see you on the next video peace